Welcome back. Been raining and freezing cold all week long. It's now Friday morning. Sun's finally coming out a little bit. A lot of clouds out there, but um, like I said in the first video, 3D printing is becoming way more involved than I thought it would be. I wouldn't say it's complicated, but I would say it's definitely uh, a learning curve. So if you're bored, you have nothing to do, you want a new hobby, get one of these suckers. Wow. Um, so uh, like I said, and also in the first video, I'm shooting this thing live. So uh, mistakes are being made, don't know what I'm doing, and you put the thing together, and then days later or whatever, you find out something was wrong, so you come back and reshoot it. So that's what I'm doing in this video. It's kind of a Heinz 57, the first part of it. I'm showing some of the mistakes that were made from the instructions that are wrong, and then I'll get into the wiring um, of it. And then the last part will be the software, which is really involved, but it's an incredible world to explore. Um, I am successfully 3D printing, um, and uh, like I've said in other videos, information is over here, over there, a little piece here, and I'd love to bring it all in one spot so that I could save everybody hours and hours worth of time trying to figure things out. For instance, um, MakerBot, they've got a video made by the factory, so these people know what they're doing. Bunch of comments made in there. Uh, for instance, all the fiber filament comes in vacuum sealed bags because it absorbs moisture. And then there's videos on what happens if it gets wet and I'm scratching my head, it's plastic, how does it absorb moisture? But there's so many things to sensitize people to that I'm discovering, and I'm sure there's tons more. So I might do a part four, which is just look at this, watch this, and understand this. So I'm just bringing it all kind of together in one place. Um, also this maker bot, they were talking about a machine that they use for ABS and one for PLA. And the PLA doesn't have a hotbed. Like, really? So you don't, because in the program, what I'm, the program I'm going to show in the next video, it has defaults for PLA and the hotbed's up at a temperature, and everybody's having sticking problems. So one video showed a hotter temperature for sticking to solve sticking problems, and I ran it up, and then I made this little tray here and I couldn't get it off the bed. I had to hammer a putty knife underneath it to get it off and wound up messing up the tape on the bed. So uh, the baker bot saying no temperature, so there's tons more that I have to explore. But So in any case, I hope you guys enjoy this part of the video, uh, corrections and then how to wire it up. And then the next video will be the software, which is really going to be involved. All right, a uh, couple of things that I want to just point out. You really have to pay attention to every single little detail that there is in the assembly pictures and uh, videos. And I did say I was going to put a link to David Dan's video. And I think that guy is from the factory. Um, but any case, one mistake I made was this goes over here because if you watch his video, he'll show you how to do all this wrapping and wire routing so that you don't wind up having to cut wires. And for me, when I did it, I didn't realize that. So extra wire I'm folding over and it's hidden inside this protective thing. Uh, so watch his video when you want to do this wrapping and routing of wires. The reason this goes over here is because this goes up through this side, goes up through the hole and down and then into the control board on this side. So I screwed up, that should have been on there, uh, you know, flip the two. Um, the second thing is, I don't know whether it's just an oversight on their side or what, but 
if you look at, let me get the one picture, this one, and then get it up in the camera or whatever, I don't know. But you look at this and it, you can't really tell for sure. It does appear that this bar here is on the top when it's mounted. And it is even more clear in this picture because it's a side view and you can clearly see the bars on top. Problem with that, uh, yeah, I guess you can see it in the camera. If this bar is on top, when you clamp the uh, belt down, you wind up with it higher. So when it goes to the extreme end, the belt is at an angle coming up. Flip this over. It should be mounted this way. It reduces that angle a lot. Not completely, but it reduces it. I did see a website where they specifically said, yeah, people are commonly installing this wrong upside down. So I took it apart and flipped this over, <clears throat> and yeah, it does work better. The next one is, and here's chat room after chat room on it. When I ran this thing, I tested the motors first. They're all working, so I told it to auto home. The Y-axis goes in the wrong direction. To home, it's going this way, and the limit switch is down here in the corner. So like I said, chat room after chat room, nobody has the solution. I can't believe it. There's even YouTube videos of people showing, look, my Y axis is going in the wrong direction. Please help. All right. I will show you exactly how to fix that problem. Um, a bunch of suggestions are go into the firmware and you just flip the direction of the axis. There is no setting in this firmware to flip any directions <laughs> on the axis. So don't bother looking. The only way you're going to do it is you'd have to reburn the firmware, which I'm not about to do. But I'll show you how to, on this connector, rewire it so that the motor goes in the opposite direction. So now my machine homes. So I'll move the camera over to show you the actual wiring. Okay, I'm hoping you guys can see this. I know it's up, well, yeah, let me just turn it over for you guys to see then. All right, so um, you're gonna have to remove the wires from the connector here. First of all, this is the motor here. Where is my little drawing thing? And going on the internet, same problem I always see. They fail to label which side of the motor you're looking at for this connector. So this is the back of the motor here, okay? And the, the actual gear or sprocket is on that side. So if you're looking at the back of the motor, this is the internal coils. coils. Note it is a six pin connector with four wires in it. They're labeling it A, B, C, D, and it's on pin one. There's nothing on pin two, three, four, nothing on five, and six. The existent um, coloring of the wires on this, and you can do this on any motor. If a Z axis is backwards and X axis is backwards, you can flip the, the direction from clockwise to counterclockwise. Right now, it's black, red, green, blue is in this. So you got to remove them and you want black, green, red, black. What? No, blue. Blue, green, red, black is the order that you want from here to here. To do it, you have to remove the connector um, from the motor, and this is a side view of the connector. The wire is, the actual wire part here is crimped into this little contact. Contact has a little leaf spring on it, and this is a plastic tab. When you look down on the uh, connector, how can I draw this? I uh, just draw a square. You'll see little plastic tabs here. And I did see one video, I'll just use this, with a guy that's trying to go down in here on the top and lift this up to get the connect contact out. Do not do that. That is absolutely the wrong way to remove the contacts. Because what's going to happen is you're going to, this gap, this little opening here that you're trying to get the screwdriver in is so small, you're going to wind up busting up, messing up this edge, 
and you'll also bend this thing down and once it's down you're not going to be able to get in there to push it back up. The correct way to remove the pins is you take a small screwdriver, uh, kind of give you an idea of this one, this is the smallest jewelers I've got. The shank on this thing is what? 45 thousandths, so that's pretty darn small. You need to push it in this way. Uh, there are extraction tools that you can buy for this particular type of contact and body and that's how they do it. You need to shove this in there and tilt it so you're lifting this up to clear the tab here. Now you can pull it out. What you're doing then, um, I pulled out the two outer ones. Once they're out, you switch them and put them back in. Then you take the two inner ones out, flip them, and put them back in. You're done. The motor is now going to go in the opposite direction. That's how you fix the wrong direction auto homing problem that nobody seems to have the solution for, has posted the solution for. So there you go. That's just kind of a heads up. Uh, two things that I found on this printer so far. The, I'm shooting the front of this thing for a second here before I get into the wiring. Did make these two guys to keep this nice and straight so it doesn't move. Uh, I did wind up loosening these guys to get them recentered. Uh, I think I already mentioned that I worked on the flex couplings to get this to stop wobbling. Um, the other thing is this fan was rotated 90 degrees so this wire was coming out of the bottom and when I was trying to connect things up to the control board I couldn't tell whether this was the fan or it went to some temperature thermocouple or what. So uh, it is the fan. You've got just two wires and the diagram is very clear which fan plugs into what connector on the control board. I will show here shortly taking this apart and what you're up against because I had the plastic broke down in there and I had to take it apart to get it out and cleaned up. Um, so heads up you'll see what happens if you take that apart. The other thing is I did order this sensor because well these springs are way too strong. Um, I tried some springs that I had that were looser but too loose. Leveling this table or getting it level with the nozzle is a pain, especially when these are that tight. So I did order the surface sensor and this thing as you can tell is huge. The pictures I've seen people are putting it on this side but you'd have to redo the limit switch is right here. You'd have to rebuild that plate to push it out because this is going to come crashing into this side. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this yet. So let me turn the machine around so you can kind of see the control board. thought I'd record this so everybody can see it just in case you have to take it apart. I don't know why this broke off. I mean, there was a white spool back there and it was going down and all of a sudden I realized, you know, here's the piece. This was in there and it was broken in the back. So I just pulled it out, tried to feed some red in there and <laughs> wouldn't get in there. But you can see what all these mechanisms do, how this works because I don't have the motor there I can't get the cam to work here Sheesh. but yeah if you undo these two screws you're going to be dealing with this spring the screw goes through through where is the oh here's the piece right here you can see goes through the fan goes through the heat sink and screws into the bottom of the motor to put it back together it's easiest to put this one in first then try to get the spring in there and then compress it and get that guy in there. So, I don't know, how am I going to get this thing compressed? I guess I got to put a screw back in there to hold that corner of the motor. Yeah, see, I'm missing the motor. Yeah, I'm completely missing the motor. 
so I gotta somehow get it back over kind of in position and get that screwed into it and then I can compress it am I in there no I don't know where it is hey all right well oh look at it's even broken here now does that just come right out then yo because it's all melted down in there okay I gotta turn it on heat it up what a mess so that's what can happen uh, camera it looks like it's pretty good light but let's see um, the print here as you can see is pretty easy to um, read or follow um, the connect most of it's all easy they call the limit switches um, where are they motion there's the motors where, where, end stops yeah so um, the top one extruder motor is the stepper motor that is on the actual moving head um, the next ones XYZ they're labeled very clearly easy to follow so the motors all go into here uh, right what have we got extruder yeah Z yeah the two Z motors and X and Y and the extruder so the fans are also easy to picture they show the two fans here and I showed the wiring so they go into these bottom two connectors right here um, the one I got stuck on is the power down here so um, hotbed's easy uh, there's one connector back there that goes onto the actual table and that's the hotbed so the black and red and it's labeled hotbed goes into the first two connectors here the extruder is the one that's difficult to figure out but uh, on the head itself there's two red wires and the insulation on the wires is completely different it's like a cloth based that's what goes into these two connectors this one actually pulls out if you want it comes off but uh, the next two is the uh, what is it power oh the power supply is over here yeah so the extruder is the one that pulls out the cloth wires go into the middle connector and then you just run power um, from the power supply on the back to these two plus and minus the one that was really a gotcha is one of these ribbons cables does say um, screen goes in this connector the farther one and then the other cable goes into the other connector because uh, do they show it in, even in this print where is yeah the print does show LCD screen so one of the cables is labeled really weird but the other one the one word screen is on there and that's where that goes um, in addition the, this power here has this giant fuse thing on it which you can see I eliminated because it just hangs out I cut the wires shorter and soldered new uh, spades on it and the reason you don't need this is because if you look inside the power supply there's a fuse in the power supply so you don't need one so that's kind of it for wiring and I guess I'll you know some point here I know this is going to be kind of a jumpy but uh, I'll show how to do the motor rewiring uh, so it homes correctly uh, not much else I can say about the wiring <laughs>